You either use the internet for fun or you use the internet to grow. You're here to grow. Welcome to TRS Clips. Who do you think is ahead in the race, according to you? We're entering a world of geopolitics now. Yeah, I mean, the two nations I can think of at the forefront of this are the US and China. These are the two nations that have the best computers in the world. If you look at the, if you look at supercomputers, the top 100, it's typically the US, China and Japan. So Japan also is a big force in this. Uh, they are an extraordinarily technologically advanced nation. They have some of the best technology in the world. As a society, they are the, maybe the most uh, high-tech society in the world. So I would say is the US, it's... China, it's Japan, maybe South Korea to a certain extent. Maybe the, Russia may also be involved in this in this business uh, to in this race uh, to a certain degree. But the four front, the four runners would be the U.S., China, and Japan. Maybe the U.S. and China. And if I were to compare the U.S. and China, maybe the U.S. may have an advantage, may may have a lead over the Chinese, uh, despite the hype about China taking making so many advancements. The U.S. has a very robust defense industry. It has an extremely advanced education system, research-based universities. All the universities are are fully fledged uh, research institutes, and uh, you have something called DARPA over there, which essentially is a funding agency, which identifies people who are doing interesting work potentially very valuable work. It funds them, gives them two or three years to try out their concept, whether it uh, succeeds or fails doesn't matter, but it gives them a limited amount of time and the, the amount of money that is actually required for the research. So, and the Chinese have tried to copy the DARPA model and they may have succeeded to a certain extent. So I think overall, if I were to weigh these two nations, I would say the US has an, ed has an edge and maybe they may be ahead of China in this matter. Does India have a DARPA equivalent? India does not have a DARPA equivalent. We have DRDO, which is nowhere uh, comparable to DARPA. See, DARPA, you know how it is. DARPA has maybe 250 people on its payroll. They are not employees. They are people who it funds. And the funding is given for maybe two years, maybe for three years. So it's a flat organization and nobody is actually on its payroll, but it funds various researchers who are doing research in various universities. So the research is done over there. It's not at the DARPA headquarters. In the case of DRDO, so, so we have maybe 250 people on its payroll, maybe 500 people on its, pay, on its payroll at a given amount of time. And the budget is about three to four billion dollars per year. DRDO has a budget of maybe two billion dollars per year. Two? Two billion. Billion. So it's, it's, uh, it's kind of comparable to, to DARPA's budget. But DRDO has about 30,000 employees out of which 5,000 are scientists and 25,000 are non-scientists. So much of the money is being used on God knows what. It is being used to pay the salaries of non-scientists. And even those 5,000 scientists, I'm not sure what they do. There is a very hierarchical structure. DARPA is a completely flat structure. And, and in the case of DRDO, they are all working at DRDO facilities and they work for DRDO and there is management and God knows what. So it's a very different kind of setup in DRDO. And if you see the kind of results that the two uh, organizations give up, the throw up, uh, DRDO is not doing bad. It is also giving us uh, good results, good technology, but nothing that is earth shattering. In the case of DARPA, everything that it produces is earth shattering. Everything is like a significant leap forward and much of it is not revealed to the world. Much of it is classified for 20, 30, 40 years. 40 years? Oh yeah, definitely. Like what technology that we use today would have been classified for 40 years? For example, uh, stealth technology. It was first revealed uh, around the time of the, of the Gulf War. The first Gulf War, 1991 or thereabouts. But that technology was around for at least 20 years, if not more. The flying wing technology has been around, the, the concept has existed since the 1940s. As in quiet air force planes. Yeah, those planes that cannot be detected by radar. They look like flying wings, like bats. You know the B-something B bomber that looks like a boomerang? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That shape, the black one. Yeah. And its various iterations. And nowadays we have uh, fighter planes like the F-22 and the F-35 that also have stealth features, which means that if you shine a radar on it, it, it won't be detected. Detected. Its cross-section will, will be the same as a tennis ball, even though it's that large of an aircraft. So it, it has certain substances that absorb radar uh, radiation or the, the, the photons. And also the angles and all that deflect it in various directions and don't let it go back to the radar uh, uh, machine itself. So the overall cross-section that the radar will see is that of a tennis ball or maybe less than that. So it, it doesn't really turn up on the radar screen unless it's a massive giant radar, in which case it's very hard to pinpoint the, the location. Mm. Okay, so that's uh, how stealth works. And this technology was developed by DARPA. The US military initially was not interested in it. 
but these guys persisted and eventually it's it's what it is today so now india is trying to develop something similar it may take time stealth technology stealth technology stealth fighter so the the next iteration the, the fifth generation fighter plane that we are trying to develop right now the amca advanced medium combat aircraft which may take its first flight by the end of this decade will be a fifth generation fighter plane with stealth features damn okay um what do you think darpa is working on right now <laughs> alien technology maybe <laughs> yeah after this announcement and um who knows look uh, you know there is this place called area 51 in i think it's in nevada or colorado maybe nevada it's it's a, a fighter plane and a aircraft testing facility it's in the middle of a dry dried lake and all that it has hangars that are always like uh, you know shrouded and covered and we don't know what's inside uh so definitely they are using they are testing futuristic aircraft maybe aircraft that we can't even imagine maybe some people say anti gravity systems and all that uh, i i don't know of any physics that would support anti gravity theories but yeah that's what people speculate so i think whatever darpa is doing right now would be at least a generation or two generations ahead of what we think technology is at today hmm. that's what i can say for sure hmm. okay and quantum computing would be a big part of one of these research adventures oh definitely see quantum computing is something that's now out in the public domain okay we have universities that are that are building quantum computers and actually doing quantum uh, i mean i mean uh, actual computing so they have been able to create working quantum computers you know uh, build a vacuum inside isolate actual atoms and manipulate the atoms place them into superpositions and entangle them and run quantum algorithms on them on them so all this has already happened and it's known to the public so this is the amount of public disclosure that we have uh, i think uh, there are a couple of us uh, based organizations that have uh, you know run quantum computations and all on quantum computers the chinese are also doing the same thing so quantum computers are known to the public they, it is known that they are and, and some i think it was microsoft or somebody who announced that they have achieved quantum supremacy which means that their computational algorithm is superior to that of a classical co- computer already in certain cases in certain computations so it's already gone beyond what a cal- classical computer can do for certain types of calculations not for everything so we have the, the chinese have announced quantum supremacy the americans have also announced quantum supremacy publicly which means that whatever darpa is doing is i would imagine a generation at least ahead of that which means that i i, I don't i don't know what exactly it could be but it could be something way more advanced than what we are seeing right now everything that chat gpt is doing has been predicted since 2015 that one day there'll be an ai bot will do this and then chat gpt comes out of nowhere takes over the world everyone's talking about it etc i think we're going to see a moment like that with quantum computing as well am i fair in saying something like this like a quantum computer will be spoken about but obviously first will be used geopolitically in some way see what you could do is if you have a robust quantum computer that can do calculations computations uh with high fidelity then you could run an ai on top of that and then then just imagine what it could do right ai artificial like a chat gpt kind of thing with the power that a quantum computer has mm. and if you use that to discover new drugs or to discover new materials or to simulate let's say simulate uh, new kinds of nuclear weapons or fusion fusion reactions or something that could give you a, an enormous uh, you know uh, lead over anybody else so you take quantum computing and the enormous power it has the kind of computational power that no other uh, supercomputer has and you place ai on top of it ai software on top of it. see ai is just a bunch of software that's what it is right and and and, and the entire data model and all that you place that on top of a quantum computer the results could be humongous so it's it's something we can only imagine right now but it could it could you know create a multiplicative effect and give the the owner of the machine essentially god like power who knows would something like this even be released for the public it won't be released for the public it's too powerful to put in human beings way hands. too powerful way too powerful okay and what i understand about technology is that you gradually discover technology like how you spoke about how one atom has been simulated inside a, a quantum computer right now am i right I'm not sure up to what extent they've done they've gone but yeah you can now I believe simulate quantum systems which means atoms and their various quantum states and all that within a quantum computer and this was not possible before because modern day 
average computers are not capable of that level of calculation even a simple atomic system is way too complex for most computers even super computers you know the orbital shapes and all those things of okay. of, of of a uh, regular atom new clips released at the same time that a podcast releases this is trs clips make sure you subscribe